All this is Dr. Mobin Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. I do the empteenth show for today. All right. So in this one short di- discussion, we are going to look at the cases in South Africa, cases cases in Gutong or Gutong, South Africa, Botswana, where we think it started or where people are saying it started, and then the ec- economic impact that we can see right now for the U.S. at least, and and what could be happening worldwide and how we should actually be a little more um, careful in the in the reaction that is happening. And I feel, uh, I, I want to make this comment up front and then we'll go into the discussion. I feel that it is the duty of the medical professionals, researchers, scientists to make their bosses aware that this is that at least from a mechanism point of view, how severe or not severe this situation may be, so that the reaction can be a little more uh, balanced. I think we are reacting more, and I think it is reasonable because we are afraid and scared of the previous events. I think this may not be, again, I may be wrong, but I think it may not be that way. So we should figure out the right approach or try to figure out the right approach. With this, let's start our discussion. So this is drbean.com. Uh, this is the first thing I want to see. This is COVID-19 in Gotham. This is where in South Africa, the first few cases were seen. And I figured out why I could not show that chart that day on this page. If I increase the zoom level, then the charts, some of the charts disappear. So the folks who maintain this page, they may like to help. So here, look at this over here really in the corner seven day seven day moving average can you see it is going down and again we can south africa is about quarter or 28 percent vaccinated so on one end there is a lot of noise that they are less vaccinated so they have a higher risk and the doctors within the country are also saying that At the same time, there is data as well. We have to keep everything in perspective. So, and again, I'm not downplaying the virus. I wish it is milder and I wish it can zip through the system and it is mild and we can all get out of this evil situation, but we don't know yet. What is interesting for me is to see that after all the noise, we it seems to be a fortunate thing that the cases are dropping. Do you see here? So it seems interesting to me. All right, continuing. And this one, I have to reset it so we can see this uh, over here. So this is the province has recorded 911,344 recoveries. This is the active death and recoveries. Again, I cannot really see very clearly and it just becomes like that. So no idea. If I go here, active cases are 21,000 total deaths. So this is cumulative anyways. I think it's not interesting. This is interesting. Hospitalization. So if I go in here, this is at this time admitted 1,000. And we'll, we'll, this is November 30. ICU 63 on ventilation 27. So keep in mind ventilation and ICU. And I'm going to go to the lower side. This is... November 20, ICU 56 and ventilation 20, admitted 540. So admitted are almost double. The uh, ICU and ventilation are not that way. However, we know that folks first end up in the hospital. Then if they continue to deteriorate there, then a few weeks later, they end up in the ICU. So there may be something to come in the future, but at least If we look at the way it was, November 15, two weeks earlier, look at the ICU numbers on ventilation. ICU number is 141. Ventilation is 34. Admitted are 1,182. So did South Africa had a higher level? Then they dropped. Then they went up again within two weeks. That is interesting. So again, this is not South Africa, this is Gotang. So an interesting chart, which to me seems to stay decoupled from the the anxiety and the, the news that we have at this time. 
even if this spike that was going up is now coming down. Okay, so continuing. This is South Africa as a country and there are newer cases now. So if I go in here, November 30, 2756. November 15, if I go to November 15, they were at 286. So from 286 to 2000, so almost 15 times or something like that, you do the math. And I wanted to also see the rate of growth. So again, please don't fall for it if somebody says this is the new peak. It is the rate of growth which is high. At the same time, the newer cases are still not as high as the peak. Again, uh, for South Africa, they have less vaccination. So there is a chance of spreading. And the spread, I think, is occurring in vaccinated and non-vaccinated. And I'll continue to say that at least so far, the information from Dr. Kutsia is that her outpatient patients, both vaccinated and unvaccinated, had milder cases. They were youngsters. They were able to recover at home within a couple of days. I actually read over here. Give me one second. It is. It was actually very interesting. A cool bean. If I can just find my mouse. A cool bean had sent this message. <clears throat> which is, uh, it is interesting to see. Doc, so there's a link for Gotang and then cases have risen. So this is from South Africa. Cases have risen over weeks, two times and three times and six times. And Monday on Monday, it's nine times the cases. Might be too soon for the hospital uptick to conclude severity. Makes sense. My friends have it now window period of up to seven days from contraction, which is interesting because if a slower incubation period or if a longer incubation period is there, then the virus should end up being milder because it is not causing damage very fast. Young infants got fever and high heart rate three days after mom's symptom onset. She is double vaccinated with Pfizer. Main symptoms, headache and some body aches Day three feels good. Husband double vaccinated with Moderna with no symptoms. Tested today, but will only know tomorrow if positive. So that is the news which I thought was very interesting as well. So back here, cases up, growth rate up, but the province that where this was, that is actually uh, kind of going down now. Now, this is Botswana. And Botswana is where we said that the first four patients who were uh, vaccinated and possibly HIV or maybe not, they were there. I don't want to incorrectly say something. So daily new confirmed cases. Look at Botswana's own cases. So there was this peak at November 7 to 11. 6 to 11 actually here. Yeah, 11. And then there is a drop in the cases. So that is a very interesting thing as well, because we've been naming Botswana everywhere too. Then I want to switch gears to the in economic impact. And I am not a finance guru of any sort at all. So for, for me to present economic situation is going to be as naive and layman as any other person who is not economic, who is not, who doesn't have good view of economy. So here, OECD warns Omicron variant could cause severe global slowdown. So this is the Economic Cooperation and Development. This is um, Organization for Economic Cooperation. I believe it is from uh, Europe. A renewed wave in the pandemic threatened to add to the existing strain on the world economy from persistently high levels of inflation. So not only inflation is occurring, I think that there is another problem. There are many folks who are not able to earn to keep their um, livelihood as reliable and stable as possible. And on top of this, the uh, imagine that we were already under the stress as society. We were under the stress. I mean, those folks who are vaccinated or not vaccinated, they're part of the society. They're us. 
and there was already a stress that get vaccinated or you're out of job or they would have to resign and there are there are quarrels about the vaccine and not vaccine and people attacking each other so there was already tension in the system and there is already a um, stress about the economic well-being and then the reaction on top of that with omicron is actually causing more now remember when previously the actual virus started at that time as well many people said that hey the economic fallout is going to be severe so it is okay if the virus spread just to protect the economy and let people continue to go out i did not agree with that statement at that time at this time at least from the data so far evolving data maybe i'll be sitting here tomorrow saying omicron is doing a lot of damage and we need to lock down and we need to do something but at least for the time being the way it is looking having a harsher severer lockdown can be looked at and reviewed to see what is the right thing to do economy is very important at the end of the day so here this is the us so this is wall street journal many of you would actually be better uh, <laughs> much better aware of this than me but if you see here mostly right almost all right and billions of dollars have evaporated in there as well and if you see here for example uh, s and p everything is down s and p is down nasdaq is down where is dow s and p 500 is down um, dow should be somewhere over here as well so this whole structure mini dow is up dax futures are down i feel that we would recover but at this time there are folks who are under stress here as well markets are reacting in proportion to the anxiety that is created by i believe leadership in many countries so if you see here we are becoming red so this is the discussion i think um it's it's a tough situation on one end if you think if we end up thinking mild that this virus is mild and then it is actually harsher bad then we could really be in trouble so then these lockdowns will look reasonable on the other hand the way the news is so far it doesn't seem like it is very severe and then the reaction seems harder but um i don't think there is a there is a reliable answer here so let's see bambi says for a week now before uk great britain cases detected i feel like i did from january 2020 uk government now mandates masks in shops and public transport in england but not cinema theaters or pubs that's interesting this is a very important point anna says experts talked and talked about a future pandemic yet so little preparation was done not even definitive research on the efficacy of masks i would actually say even more than that after 2 years almost 2 years actually this is december so 2 years in the pandemic we should have at least had the tools in place to quickly identify the severity by doing the in lab um researches you could put the virus in a dish and you could attack it with the antibodies and you could see how it works or with the cell, with the with the cells and there could be many ways to try to understand at least mechanistically that what could be the severity and there is uh, i was surprised with the who's leaders message that we should have learned our lessons well, well, who was going to learn the lessons you and you are telling now the others that you should have learned your lesson So anyways there is a I think at a leadership level in many countries we just waited for the vaccines and nothing else was done vaccines were the holy grails that once they are there they would just save us and nothing else was needed other than going to tv shows and just saying interesting things and i think here we are there should have been more planning more learning 
better um, teams form, better tools form, better preparation. So uh, I think we are all aware of that. So with this, I have done a number of discussions today. So hopefully this we can stop and then meet again tomorrow. Let's see <clears throat> some questions. Let's answer the questions for another five, 10 minutes and then we stop. Blank Blank says, if a vax person gets sick with COVID, does it mean the vaccine, vaccine failed? If so, the outcome would be the same as it would have been with natural response, no. So um, multiple answers to this one. So how about I draw a little bit that would uh, give me my chance of drawing as well. So vaccinated person getting infected. I think we are now all aware of my this drawing. Right? So if somebody gets infected here, where the antibodies have gone down and immune cells have become memory cells, then that is fine. That is not a failure of the vaccine. That is just that the virus came in and the immune system takes a couple of days to respond. And that is also with the previous infection too. So it is not a failure. It's just how our body behaves. If a vaccine has made the immune system active within the four months, for example, and then the virus appears, and then we become sick as well, more sick than we should be, a few hours, six hours, 10 hours of feeling bad and then becoming okay is not a problem. That vaccine has trained our system, it handled it. But imagine if it became more serious and if we were healthy, then yes, there is a problem. Either our immune system has become problematic, if we are healthy, then not, or the virus has become mutated. So if this area is where the problems are, then we have a problem with the mutation or vaccine failures. If this area is where the problems are, then that is fine, that is normal. Then, um, if so, the outcome would be the same as it would have been with the natural response. So now, if we talk about the breakthrough infection, breakthrough infection can keep a person, again, healthy person, sick for a couple of days, three days maybe. That is much better than somebody receiving the virus for the first time, staying sick for weeks or even months. I want to have one of our cool bean who just became sick. He was not vaccinated and it went on for a month. So it can become long. So I hope that that answers that question. <laughs> Eric Dog says, we get brush fires every five to 10 years. Do we prepare? Got point received Eric Dog, but that is not a pandemic. This was a pandemic. This I am, um, um, I understand your point. 250 toxic says, have humans not learned anything? We just spread all these other variants around the world and now we are going to spread this new variant also. So you're correct. So the lockdowns may be an answer, although even those are not working very well, but I understand this. And if this variant is bad, then yes, lockdowns make sense. If it ends up being milder, then they would not. So nobody has the answer, but. I would think that, yeah, sure, lockdown is an answer. So 2KA says, early reports on increased hospitalizations of children under two years sounds alarming to me. Would you please monitor how it develops? I will. I talked about this yesterday as well. Children normally under two years of age, especially under one year of age, one year to two year is more of a fuzzy time where children, some children's immune system would have started becoming developed and started taking over, some children still developing. So it is possible that children under two are actually at a higher risk. And there, I looked at the stats yesterday, and the stats before Omicron and after Omicron seemed the same, um, but we'll keep monitoring. <laughs> the heart and soul says 
Dr. Bean, when do you sleep? <laughs> Never. So Sita says, we love it when you draw. My sleep for the last one or two weeks, it was very tough because Luffy had decided to sleep with me and he would wake up at three o'clock and then I would not be able to sleep again. And he'll start meowing. He wanted to go out. So it would just be, I'll wake up at two to three. And then I'll stay awake till I did these talks. So I accumulated a lot of sleep during this time. But for a few days, Luffy has given me a break. He actually sleeps here in this room. And I sleep in the other room. And he does not bother me too much. So I've been having some good sleep for a couple of days. OK. So Heart and Soul says, I'm Saswati, same person. Very good. Nice to meet you here as well. Thomas Gold says, the new variant is spread around the world by fully vaccinated people as they're the only people who can travel. Eventually, from a logical point of view, yeah, you're correct. M. Gregory says, I have family members that fight me over natural immunity. Uh, immunity acquired from the natural infection is a good immunity. It, it works and it is fine. The only thing is, one is not um, suggested to go get the natural infection. That can be dangerous. But if somebody got infected accidentally and they have recovered, then they have a very good immunity. And they have proved it is, I cannot imagine that we take a person who had become infected and recovered. Their body just showed us that they could recover without any problem. Why are you saving them from the same thing which they just recovered without a problem? I always say this, that uh, it is like waking up a sleeping person and saying, here is your sleeping pill. Okay, so a couple of more questions and then we stop for today. Um, Heart and Soul says, my daughter had COVID, no sense of smell at all. Vaccine killed my brother. I drank COVID, no symptoms. Who knows? Wow. Okay, so sorry about the situation. So uh, Dr. Bean, can you please review the Hong Kong myocarditis study? I will. I have already done one myocarditis study, and I would do this as well. This is a very interesting question, diversity love. Do Dr. Bean, does viral load at exposure predict death? No, it does not predict death, but it does predict infection to disease or not. So if we can say from disease to death, but it cannot predict death. Or let me say it this way, we haven't gotten any data yet that there is a correlation. Okay, to let go says, YouTube took away the G from glymphatic nervy. Um, my glymphatic talks, I thought it was still glymphatic. <laughs> Skyfrog says, why is Florida doing so well? So I will have to look into it. The problem with the discussing US is that whatever you discuss, there is going to be someone who's going to be upset. So I just don't discuss US. Jeff says, we don't know if there's not a problem. There might be a long COVID and there are reports of patients having drugs. 
anybody who becomes moderate and severe would develop that. So makes sense. And I don't think we should say that Omicron is not a problem. At the same time, so far, the news from doctors that are coming in are saying that this is milder. I wish it is milder. Freddie Munro says, uh, thanks, Okubin. You have saved many lives and educated so many. Thank you. You are what heroes look like. Thank you very much. We did it all together. We, if we became a tribe, we did this journey together, and here we are. <laughs> Columbia Bean says, wow, Dr. Bean has been busy today. I have, so the thing is, is there are so many, there are still so many questions. And these are Omicron related, most of them. And these need answers right away. If I answer them 10 days later, then they have no benefit. So these are needed right away. And the problem is when I discuss them in one long shot, then majority of the people don't watch it. You can look at the COVID-19 uh, question videos and you would see that very f the viewership is less. And it's not that I'm complaining about the viewership. What I'm saying is it seems like then there are so many questions answered in there which are not reaching people who may need those answers. So today, for the first time, I tried it to do one question at a time. And uh, there has been a lot of <laughs> folks who are happy. And there have been lots of uh, comments as well that, hey, this is just too much that there are too many of these videos coming in. The second thing is my videos have another um, interesting, I don't know if it is a positive or not. I am always live. So it is not edited. This is what it is. And so it doesn't have that benefit of cutting out ums and ahs and tongue slips or mistakes or errors or, or dull moments. It's just what it, whatever it is. So that also reduces the uh, quality of the talks. But I like it that you, we are talking, you are talking, and we are, we are sitting in our coffee shop. Um, so this is interesting. Anurag says, today's Gotang cases are 6,000 plus. So that is interesting because the cases that I have here, let me go there. The cases that I'm seeing are November 30, this. So this is seven day moving average of the cases, November 30. Today is 12-1. So 12-1, let's see. New cases, is this the number you are reading? 6,156. So let's see, 30th November. Let's see. Total cases, this, total deaths are these, active cases, new cases. Kotong daily case is seven day moving average. So this is seven day moving average. So seven day, there were 7,156, sorry, 6,156 new COVID-19 cases reported in the past 24 hours. And for the past week, the province has recorded an average of 2,898 cases per day. So one day is 6,156. So maybe the Average is dropping, but still in one day, there were a lot. So thank you very much, uh, Anurag, for pointing that out. OK. Barbara says, so Barbara, how is Lotus? What a fantastic job of doing a genuine live stream. These are so much better than pre-recorded videos. Thank you. <laughs> so Matthew says, I'm curled up in bed, falling to sleep to this. Thank you very much. Go to sleep. Good night. Um, <laughs> Heart and Soul says, Odyssey way more fun. Yeah, today, yesterday was so much fun. And I still am not able to actually publish that. It has become recorded. It is sitting somewhere in Odyssey. I tried to bring it to publication. And it still needed some information. And it was still processing something. So please answer, is 
Omicron, a naturally mutated virus to cure COVID variants? It could be. So we are all thinking, look, if our prayers are answered, <laughs> I know I'm a scientist and I'm talking prayers too, but if our prayers are answered, and if this is actually milder, then this would be a great sweeper of the other bad variants and normalizing back to normal, bringing us back to normal. But if itself turned out to be a horrible thing, then we would be stuck. This is actually a very important thing. John says, Florida is doing great because of early treatment with Regeneron, hospitalization and death are way down. I would have given Regeneron, remember for a year, I have been saying, please remember Regeneron is great. I do not know why Regeneron is not made as standard, not even you have to get that by appointment or if you ask for it, just give it to everyone. Regeneron is awesome. <laughs> this is very interesting. Are you talking about me, Excalibur? Talk radio station in Jackson, Tennessee. I talk about you on there a lot. They call me the mockingbird because I repeat what you say. Thank you very much. Is that me or someone else? Janet says, thank you very much. So Barbara says, I'm logging in late and will watch the video again later. Thank you, Dr. Bean, for all the work you've done. Doing today, I watched one of your earlier videos between meetings. So I'll see. So far, it seemed like the earlier videos, maybe there were just too many of them. They don't have much viewership. So if the point is defeated, that the point is that, hey, if I do smaller videos and one video, one question, and if that can help more, then good. If not, then we'll go back to this <laughs> pattern as we have now. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we should do a Zoom this week as well. And please uh, have a good day. Please safe, stay safe. I'm looking at questions too. Question in Odyssey, can we do live chat in real time? So JLB, yes, we can. It was a little, uh, maybe we had to get used to it. I sent them a little critical feedback of saying this is not the most um, beautiful experience. But it seemed like we could do it. It's just that, we had to get used to it. I had to get used to it. My mic did not work. That was the most frustrating thing. And that was not Odyssey's problem. That was my problem that over here, my mic system just did not work. So Bambi says, lectures, if I'd know, known, I would have watched them earlier. Got it. Thank you. Um, okay, so Slam says, um, I'm able to share these, shorter is better. Okay, so do a quick unofficial thing, shorter, small videos. And is it necessary now not to do, I mean, if these are short, there are hundreds of questions. I will have to keep going one short video, another, 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 another. Would you get slammed by five, 10 videos in a day that are short, but that have various questions. So I do not know what are the dynamics going to look like. <laughs> Boxy lady says, my kitten, Binks Mobin, <laughs> wow, is snuggled up on my lap, purring away, taking a break from listening to the audio book, The Real Anatomy, Anthony Fauci by RFK, cried several times, heartbreaking, yeah. Barbara Mack MD says, I'm so grateful for your hard work. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So with this, how about we break for today? Um, Time Warp says I like the short ones. So from this point on, let's make it a quick thing. Comments only about short or not short and multiple in a day or not. If you said just do one short video in a day, that would mean questions would sit out there for months before I can reach them. So tell me some of your thoughts and we'll go from there. In the meantime, please like, subscribe and share and 
If you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee or you can be a patron or you can use PayPal. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. I would see you tomorrow.